Boosh! What's up guys, it's Ben back again with another video. Today we are going to be talking about the difference between Lightroom and Photoshop. I have an entire list of things that we are going to be going over. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and toss a like on there if you guys would like. Um, apparently there is no more like dislike button, so um, I mean my feelings can't get hurt anymore. Isn't that right, YouTube? So I wanna make something perfectly clear. I'm not going to tell you which program you should buy, but I will be telling you about the strengths and the disadvantages of each program. And then you will have to formulate your own decision on which one you should purchase. It is your money, it is not my money. I have absolutely no affiliation with uh, Adobe on any of these things. It's just stuff that I use for my career and all that other stuff. So let's go ahead and hop right into the video. So when I was first starting photography and I was first starting photo editing, I only had access to Photoshop. It was a bootleg version of Photoshop CS2. And if you guys don't know what that looked like, it was a very dumbed down, very um, gray looking, if I remember correctly, of Adobe Photoshop. Um, it was kind of limited on what we were able to do as opposed to what we have now as uh, with masking and with all that other stuff. And um, and that's what I used to uh, to start working on uh, on my photos and stuff back when I was, I think I think I was I think I was 12 when I started doing that there. I didn't have really access to Lightroom. So when Lightroom started becoming a huge thing, um, I personally did not like it. I didn't have any interest in it and I didn't use Lightroom clear up until I believe my junior year of college, which was only a year ago. So I didn't start using Lightroom until about a year ago, but after I learned the proper ways of using Lightroom, then I started using Lightroom and incorporating it into my workflow. So what is, what is some advantages of, of Lightroom? So the first advantage that is obvious in my brain is the fact that you can do major batch editing. When you're batch editing, you can go in to the import tab on Lightroom and you can click on every single photo that you would like to edit and only edit one of them and copy all of the color grading that you did to that photo and apply it to all of those others. Say you had a hundred photos that were taken around the same lighting context. You were able to now edit all of those 100 photos in literally a quarter of the time that it would have taken you years before Lightroom became a huge thing. So that is one thing that I believe that professional photographers, especially with social media, um, like to use because with social media, you have to stay consistent on, it's a problem that I have, but with Instagram and social media in general, you have to stay consistent on what on the content that you're putting out. So batch editing with Lightroom is a huge uh, deal and it became a huge deal with me when I started working for companies and cities putting up um, f Photos and editing their photos to, to make sure that I had uh, everything done and it's a huge time management uh, Helper with that so batch editing is a huge deal for for Lightroom you can't do batch editing as easy in Photoshop. Yes, of course, you can copy and paste the layers and the uh, the curves layers and all that other stuff. Uh, but the thing is, is that it, it's a lot easier with Lightroom. You can control A and apply all of the the assets. And then with, with Photoshop, it's, it's a lot harder to do and a lot more time constraining. And, and I believe that's probably where Photoshop is lacking, but Photoshop is a huge, strong asset. You can do a lot more things in Photoshop, which brings me to some of the strengths of Photoshop. With Photoshop, you if you're looking at doing a lot more hardcore manipulation of photos or, or light graphics designing, um, Photoshop is probably your best bet uh, without going into you know Illustrator and all that other stuff. I've done photos that I would not have been able to do on Lightroom in Photoshop, like layering multiple photos or um, until uh, the, the beginning of uh, 
or until about six months ago when Lightroom came out with their new update for masking, um, Photoshop was the king of masking. And now you can completely in Lightroom just select your subject from the background. You don't actually have to go in and paint in your subject anymore. So Lightroom has definitely come a long way with masking, but Photoshop is super strong, adding text, adding gradients, adding uh, texture. Um, Photoshop is huge. Uh, when it comes to photo manipulation, but if you're wanting to do some color correcting, definitely uh, use Lightroom. We're going to go on to the next point, which is a strength of Lightroom, and that is ease of use. Um, Lightroom is super user friendly. It, the, the user face or the UI of Lightroom is super easy to learn. And it took me a while, but I'm, I'm very like meticulous and like set in my ways. Uh, I'm, I'm not one for change, you know, so if I find a certain rhythm in my photo game, then I will probably stick with it. But the user interface has gotten a lot better um, from when I first ran into Lightroom. Um, it's very easy to use. I, I believe that probably an hour a day just learning it, you'll probably get it within a week. Now, on the other side of that, Photoshop's user interfaces, you have a lot more to learn. There's a lot more tools. There's a lot more things that you can do but a lot more strenuous when it comes to needing to know um, a lot of the tools and a lot of the layers and all this other stuff. So it, with Photoshop, it's a lot more meticulous, but you can do a lot more. So that's where um, people kind of get in their head about it. Like, do I want the ease of use or do I want to be able to do more, but I have to learn a lot more. So I'm not saying that it's too hard that you can't learn. All, all I'm saying is you have to put a little bit more effort um, into learning it in order to be able to, um, use Photoshop proficiently. So the last point that I want to make is the way that I use Photoshop and Lightroom together. I recently did start using Lightroom, uh, in my workflow when I started needing to do batch editing a lot more to get my, uh, assets and my content out a little bit faster to clients or to the social medias. I adopted uh, the use of Lightroom into my before editing. What I would do is, is I would rank all of my photos in Lightroom one through five. I would edit the soft edits, which is color grading, which is light skin correction, which is uh, a little bit of masking and um, getting getting things that are distractions out of the photo. I will usually do that in, in Lightroom. Um, but later on, um, I started to uh, notice some photos where I needed to completely remove a subject or I would have to completely remove items that are a lot bigger that Lightroom has a little bit more trouble with uh, with getting rid of. So I would take it into uh, Photoshop to do more of those strenuous um, photo manipulations uh, that Lightroom has a hard time with handling. I personally think they kind of have like a good um, a good partnership. Um, and I think that that would probably be the best option. So I do know that um, the pricing as of right now is pretty up there for certain programs. If you are a student, um, Adobe has some great options for you. I used it myself, um, but I believe it's $30 for both per month. Um, or you could pay like $200 for the full year for both. So guys, that is going to do it for this video. Um, I hope you guys had a really happy holiday and you guys um, are spending some time with family or some friends if you have friends. I really wish I had friends. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, hit that like button. And if you have a friend or a family member who's struggling looking for a photo editing software and would like to hear it from someone who actually professionally uses it, definitely send this video to them. I hope that I helped. And if you guys are struggling trying to figure it out, I hope that I was there to help you guys out. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Stay classy. Bye. Boosh. What's up guys? It's Ben back again with another video. Today we are going to be talking about why my dogs keep barking. I have cat hair all over my hair. My hat? My hair? Yeah, my hat is definitely my hair because I have no hair. <laughs>